Hey everyone, Roman Jenkins here. Uh, I'm going to make this kind of quick uh, because I don't want to run over and uh, start talking about nothing for a while, which I've done a few times. I wanted to show you guys what Intel does. I picked up one of those things at the uh, end of the last level. And if you pick up more of them, you remove all these black lines here and it shows you text like this. Uh, the reason I didn't go on an Intel hunt is com some of them are pretty obscure. Uh, there's only a few that are kind of directly out in the open and easy to find uh, and I I really had no desire to be basically consulting a strategy guide before every weapon uh, level to find it um, maybe I'll do that if I ever have another game like this I want to LP um, and I'll show you what redemption unlocked for me uh, this is the first time I've actually entered the Intel screen in this game uh, Intel's one of those things that's just a Call of Duty staple, I guess. Uh, it's been in Modern Warfare 1, 2, 3 in this, and I believe also in World of War. In Modern Warfare 1, it opens up uh, it opened up uh, different cheats that you could use, like ragtime mode and tire mode, which were interesting, and then Modern Warfare 2, it was nothing, and this had unlocked some interesting stuff. But, here's the other thing you can do here. You can go back to the menu. Uh, no, actually, you can break out of this chair if you start holding, if you start throwing L and R triggers at it. Um, so Alex Mason, because of all the concussions, this now does not know his own strength and officially has retard strength. So you can just break out of that chair he's been in. Um, so yeah, you can walk around this room, you can check out where you've been held up, you can sit calmly back down in the chair like nothing ever happened, or you can come over here to this old computer and play some Zork. Well, not really. You can check your email, you can play Zork, uh, but we're not going to do that. Uh, and you can check other people's emails like John Kennedy's and Richard Nixon's. Uh, but we're going to play some Dead Ops Arcade. Now, I've got about 20 more minutes of video here, and I don't want to talk the entire time because I've already tried to do that three times, and I, I just can't find anything interesting to talk about for 20 minutes while nothing really happens. It, Dead Ops Arcade is a twin stick shooter, it's, you know, it, it's in the vein of Smash TV. Actually, it would if the Smash TV guys were smart, they probably would have sued somebody for this because it's almost a direct ripoff of Smash TV. Uh, you get charged by mobs of people, you shoot them with uh, infinite ammo and never reloading gun, and uh, you pick up power-ups and move on to the next second one of the next uh, four sections that you have available to you. Um, that said, it's pretty fun and you can actually do this in multi you can do this multiplayer once you've unlocked it by going to the dead ops uh, arcade thing in that computer you can go into zombies mode and start playing this mission that's not too bad you can do this multiplayer I like that uh, you know I like that they included something like this in the game uh, they didn't have to and I think that's kind of one of the things I liked about the this game uh, the, the uh, Treyarch obviously took some time and said, "I'm we're going to make a good game. We're not going to make a good Call of Duty game. We're not going to make a Call of Duty game and call it a fucking day. We're going to make a good game with a lot of different things in it and a lot of fun. And for the most part, this game is a lot of fun. Uh, there are sections that bug me, and I made myself very clear about those sections that bug me. Uh, but I thought the Cold War stuff was really cool, and I was glad that everyone else did too. Um... I'm sorry I screwed up so much stuff. Uh, there were typos in the info dumps. There were misstatements that I shouldn't have made if I just thought like for four more seconds when I was typing uh, things out. But, you know, it, it is what it is. I screwed up in some of that stuff and I fully accept that fact. Um, but yeah, I, I had a lot of fun doing this LP. And I did want to thank you guys for watching it and making it, I consider it very successful. And I didn't know that that was actually, there was actually like a upper limit on uh, how many views this would get. I, you know, I saw the first one has something like a little over a thousand now. And I, when I did the first one and I had like 80 views over the course of a day, I was worried I, you know, I hadn't done it. I had done something wrong. This LP wasn't very good. Um, apparently I'm not very good at Dead Ops Arcade, um, uh, as I died in one of the first three levels, but, you know, it, it turns out that, uh, I went to the Sandcastle after I did this to see if there's something I was doing wrong, and before I could post, 
Someone had mentioned that you know most LPs, when even if they're massively popular uh, or you know they're well known or anything like that, when they first go out, they they don't get a lot of views. And you know, uh, I got about 300 views about two weeks later, and I was going, oh okay, this is going well. And I looked at it the other day, and it was a little over a thousand views. And I you know it kind of struck me that it doesn't all happen at once. Uh, so I, I wanted to thank everyone who watched the videos over time and who's coming into them now even if I if, uh, when I bumped this thread with this video um, you know thanks a lot for everything thanks for discussing the game thanks for watching uh, me play through it even if it could get a little boring sometimes I do apologize for that but sometimes this game is just boring um, thanks boat section for making me hate everything uh, but yeah, I mean, I was very, very happy with the number of views I got per video early on, and then it started to pick up steam, and people started to appreciate it, and post in the thread, and there was there were some really great people who posted in there, and corrected me when I was wrong, and people like Delivery McGee, like I said earlier, and uh, who, you know, he came in with some of his dad's Vietnam War stories when we were in the Vietnam sections of the game, you know, that's, that's just pretty cool stuff. Um, and, you know, I'm glad people enjoyed the info dumps and learning about some of this stuff that maybe they didn't know about until then. I'm sure everyone knew about the SR-71, but, you know, I thought some of that stuff was actually uh, pretty interesting when I found out about it. Uh, Operation Ivory Coast, especially. That was one of my favorite ones to write up, because it just kind of suggested how dumb, <laughs> how dumb things were always, not just now. Uh... But overall, I just, you know, I, I wanted to say thanks to everybody for, uh, for sitting through this stuff and for dealing with my occasional uh, lack, of, uh, lack of verbosity uh, or ability to speak or trouble with uh, actual words, because I sometimes do have that, despite the fact I'm 26 and should not have that problem. Uh, you know, it... It was a lot of fun to play this game again, but there were some sections that were just pure drudgery. Um, I didn't mind too much until about Kowloon, when I said, you know, fuck it, I'm gonna go double-fisted and make my life a living hell for about four hours. Uh, it didn't take that long. I was surprised it didn't take that long. Uh, when I, uh, well, I guess what a lot of people do is they set it to the lowest difficulty possible, and they uh, they go through it, and you know it, it's relatively easy at the lowest difficulty. I didn't change difficulty levels. Uh, truth be told, a lot of these, a lot of the videos you see are actually done in sequence. So I would do like two or three levels at a time, record all of it, check it immediately after uh, after the third level to see if uh, occasionally. The frame rate and sound on this uh, don't sync up really well, and uh, it records at like 20 frames per second, and the sound is going like at 60 frames, so it doesn't sync up, and it looks terrible, and it's bad. Uh, but because Call of Duty runs at a solid 60 frames per second, and that's their, you know, that's one of the trademarks of the game is that it doesn't dip below that frame rate. Uh, it's really noticeable when it happens. I lost a couple videos to that, uh, just the HD PVR software not working uh, as intended, but it wasn't too bad. It was early videos where I was only doing like one short mission at a time. Uh, when you get to the later levels though, you, you really want to just power through a lot of stuff. Um, and I lucky, uh, you know, I was luckily, luckily uh, yeah, lucky not to lose a lot of videos to that. Um, so I was kind of happy, but I mean the last level was definitely uh, I didn't remember that level fondly um, I did a quick about two or three level playthrough of this uh, game before I started the LP before I recorded video one uh, I did a couple quick videos and I did one or two actual uh, extra run-throughs of some levels, like the uh, the stealth level with, uh, with uh, Woods, where you go into the rat tunnels, which, by the way, is one of my favorite levels in this game. Uh, I did a quick run-through of that before I actually played it, so I wouldn't die too many times in that sequence where you, uh, 
you finish the stealth section and you have to go and uh, take all those guys out uh, and you know pick up the uh, the Grim Reaper and fire it at the uh, the boats. Yeah, I I, did, I played through that level to that point, so I wouldn't screw up too many times. So there was some planning in it, and it got more intense as I went further and further on. Um, but overall, you can it, Call of Duty Black Ops is one of those games where you can really just pop it into your Xbox, your PlayStation, or your PC, and just kind of play it. It's not a, a really cerebral game. It's not anything overly special. You're not tasked with doing anything super uh, super challenging. You know, pull left trigger, kill people. If you just pull the left trigger, literally, if you just pull the left trigger, your guy will automatically aim at somebody nearby. So instead of doing what I did, which was hold down left trigger and try to uh, correct my aim, which uh, I'm more used to because I play a lot of this online and it doesn't do the snap two person thing like that in online games. Uh, so I I ended up probably getting a couple stupid deaths because I didn't want to use that feature or understand that feature still worked. Um, but yeah, it it was a fun experience. Uh, it's it it's a good game to LP. It's a good game to cut your teeth on, I think, because it kind of plays itself out. You know, it's so highly scripted. And the game makes sure you see a lot of the scripted events that you're not going to have to worry about a lot of stuff. You know, even the the more, more difficult sections in this game are not as difficult as they could be. Uh, I made the most difficult section in this game difficult. It's not Quezon. It's that one room I died about 40 times on in uh, Kowloon that I put that specialty video together about. Uh, you know, if you do that with... Uh, dual fisting, uh, you are going to have a bad game. You're not going to like yourself, you're not going to like the game very much after that. It's just a very difficult section overall, and uh, it, it's made much, much easier if you're using weapons you can aim at a distance with. Uh, but if you're not, you got to be really smart, really careful, and there's only a couple paths you can really take through the part of that, uh, that part of the level uh, when you're doing dual fisting. That said, it's you know, Kowloon's an average map. Otherwise, there's not really much to it that's different. I mean, you're in a lot more close quarters than you usually are, with a, a lot smaller force working with you. But I mean, overall, it's kind of boring, and I think that's uh, that's not exactly against a knock against the game because it doesn't hurt to slow things down a little bit make it a little more methodical not, that, not everything you know has to you know sparkle and crack uh, throughout the entire game but Kowloon was definitely uh, one of those missions that needed a little help to be as interesting as it was uh, that said I still think the worst mission in this game was the the boat mission uh, where you started off in the boat and then you went to generic Call of Duty level including sniping uh, I, I just I didn't like it. I wanted to just Blair born in the USA over it and not even comment on the entire section. You know, to be completely honest with you. Um, but overall, I thought the missions were good. I wish they had switched the uh, underwater base with the uh, the mountaintop mission. I wish that was the last mission and Mason fought Dragovich for a parachute while going down the mountain with an avalanche hurtling behind him and Hudson and Weaver at the bottom getting ready to uh, tear off in a truck they stole. Uh, I would like to have seen the uh, the character switching continue there so you're you know you're up there as Mason you're fight you're chasing down Dragovich while Hudson and Weaver are trying to get out of there after stopping the Nova 6 release and you know you're switching between these characters and finally Mason jumps down the mountain and you switch just as uh, he lands on the truck in his parachute and you drive off that would have been cool that would have been a great way to end the game uh, but instead it gave you generic Call of Duty level with gimmick at start and it bugged the hell out of me when I played it this time because I had such a firm memory of that mission being really bad and I couldn't remember why and you know, then I played the game, and I looked at it, and I realized, I remember why it was bad now. It was because it was so painfully generic, and I had come to expect a lot more from the game. And you have to consider the missions before that were the, 
you know, the Revelation one, but before that was the Nova 6 stuff, where it showed you the two perspectives on the thing, it gave you the twist to the game, and you had the whole, uh, the whole biomask, uh, you know, the bio situation, where you had the, uh, the hazmat suit on, and, you know, your health system changed completely, you were given an IR scope for the first time in the game, which I fucking didn't care for at all, um, and you just had to play it so differently from that point. And then it comes back and it's like, fuck you, America, chopper, fucking attacking boat in Cuba of Harbor. Fuck yeah, jets fly overhead, you know, eagle cries as it gets emblazoned on the flag. Ted Nugent's there for some reason or another. Uh, you know, that's, like, what the fuck was that at the end? That, that sucked. Um, but... I don't think me saying this a year and a half after this game was released will actually change the ending. So I don't know how much my complaining is really going to help anything. Uh, I, I would really like to see how they handle Black Ops 2 if it's going to play like this did where it limited the Call of Duty gimmick stuff uh, to kind of a handful of uh, shorter sections or if it's going to go full-out Call of Duty style. But the fact that Modern Warfare 3 has sold fewer game uh, copies of the game at this point in its life than uh, Black Ops did at this point in its life makes me feel like uh, you know Treyarch knows that they're pretty good in what they're doing. And uh, they can get away with uh, slowing down the game and not going fucking full-out Michael Bay on it, and leaving a little bit of subtlety into it. Which isn't a bad thing in any regard, really. Um, so yeah, enjoy this. I actually get further than I've ever gotten uh, before uh, in Dead Ops Arcade, which is not really saying a lot because I used to bump into it every now and again when no one was online. But that was about it. Uh, one last thing, I did want to take a moment to thank uh, the guys in the LP Sandcast uh, Sandcastle. Uh, they helped out a lot with uh, with making sure this was a good LP before I even posted anything. I mentioned it before in the thread briefly when I posted the uh, the video that I initially brought into there, uh, and they critiqued it, and you know it wasn't there wasn't a lot of pleasantness, but that's not the you know that's not the point of it. They want to make sure that what gets produced on the for sub forum is actually good stuff, and that people would want to watch and. Uh, obviously that worked out for me so you know thanks a lot there guys uh, this is uh, it's been a lot of fun doing this and you know putting the work into it uh, I can see why some people uh, you know some people do one and they're gone but I, I think I have another one in me uh, at least I want to do Ghost Recon Advanced Warfighter uh, I mentioned it in the last video but I the more I thought about it the more I really want to do it uh, I've got a similar gimmick kind of cooked up to the, the Cold War info dumps that I hope people are going to be interested in uh, if it doesn't start a console war somehow. Um, but yeah, I, I hope everyone enjoys the rest of the Dead Ops Arcade as I fail miserably from here on out. Uh, thanks again for watching everything, everyone, uh, and I hope to see you soon. Bye.